Hi, this is Rebecca with Homeschooling with a Full Plate. Today we're going to talk about your IHIP, which stands for Indi Individualized Home Instruction Plan. Um, you, after you send in your letter of intent, intent, you should receive a packet in the mail from your school district. Uh, and unless you're planning on handwriting all of your reporting, your IHIP and quarterly reports, the best thing to do with this packet is to throw it in the recycle bin. Now, sometimes schools will send in that packet uh, requests for additional information that you do not need to send to them. Uh, examples of this would be health information. You don't need to submit any type of health records, immunization records, anything like that to your school district. You don't need to report to your school district what your level of education is, how big your family is, any, any type of additional demographic information. They don't need to receive that. Occasionally we do have homeschool families in New York State who are requested to send in pretty much in school enrollment information. You do not need to send that and if you do get requests for information that goes beyond what the homeschool statutes require, which is pretty much your, your IHIP and quarterly reports, uh, please contact your local LEA representative or a representative of another um, homeschool organization and they can help you with that. All right, so here is what the homeschool regulations actually say. So it says within 10 days of the receipt of the notice of intent to instruct at home, that's your letter of intent, the school district shall send the parents a copy of this section. So that's what I'm holding right here is a copy that was sent to me uh, by my school district this year. Pretty convenient. You can also find this online if you haven't received this yet. Um, so within four weeks of the receipt of, of your packet of materials or by August 15th or um, whichever is later, the parent shall submit the completed IHIP form to the school district. This district shall provide assistance in preparation of the forms, etc. Um, you really would have better assistance from other homeschoolers in preparing the forms. So don't, don't go to the schools for that. Find other homeschoolers that can help you with that. Um, so, um, so within 10 business days of receipt of the IHIP or August 31st, um, Whichever is later, the school district shall notify the parents that the IHIP complies with the requirements of the subdivisions of this letter, et cetera. And it, and it tells you about other contingencies. If it doesn't, I would say most of the time, um, it's pretty much a rubber stamp process. Most of the time, you're not going to have any issues with it. Occasionally, you have a school district that is um, particularly persnickety about things. Again, if you run into that situation, you're probably not the only one who's had issues with your IHIP that year. Con contact your local homeschool organization for some, for some support with that. Oftentimes, it's just a matter of um, having one of their representatives talk to the school district and um, get things straightened out. All right, and as far as the content, content of the IHIP, and I'll show you my examples of this in a few minutes, uh, you need to have, of course, the child's name and age and grade level. I usually just use date of birth, um, a list of syllabi, curriculum materials, textbooks, or pretty much just a plan for how you're going to teach the subjects. Um, dates for submission of your quarterly reports. You get to choose those. Um, names of individuals providing instruction. So I list maybe the kid's violin teacher, if they're getting art through the homeschool co-op, etc. And... Uh, a statement or I guess the next part is if they're um, doing dual enrollment in the community college or whatever you list that. Then there's a whole list of what subjects they need to be learning at what grade grade level. So it might be helpful to peruse this part of the legislation on your own just to see of course uh, your other homeschoolers that are helping you can help you with this and I'll show you the forms that I um, that I've created for myself, feel free to plagiarize those because those hit all of all of these high points right here. All right, so here is my cover letter for my eye hips. So you'll notice I just uh, simply say enclosed are the eye hips, list my children. Um, and I always say just because I started out with my first with my first son for first second grade sending probably like a small town phone book full of tables of content and um, scope and sequence from the curriculum companies, et cetera. I mean, it was for four kids, I'd, it, it would be like a whole ream of paper to do this. So I just say in the interest of saving paper, scope and sequence of content um, and, and table of contents of our wide, widely used curriculum are available upon request. That way it saves you photocopying all that, saves them having to file through all of that 
truthfully, I think most of the people that handle your homeschool reporting don't really want or need all of that to go through. Um, if they do, they can let you know. Um, and I also say curriculum and plans may change depending on the needs of the child and the availability of cooperative learning and enrichment opportunities. You can always change what you're doing partway through the year. If it's not working for you, if something better comes up, you just let them know in your quarterly report that you switched from uh, this book for math to another book for math or this reading program to another one. Um, and I also say all instruction will be provided by me unless otherwise noted. And so I just know on on my IHIP who's providing instruction for say violin or art or whatever. Quarterly reports will be submitted on or about the following dates. And I choose some dates that make sense for me. So that would be that would be my cover letter that covers some of those bases. Um, well, I won't start with the high school one. Let's start with an elementary one here. All right, so here we have grade two. Um, as you can see, I have name, date of birth, grade at the top, and then I just list. I, I have categories. I, I group together English, language arts, libra library skills, mathematics, social studies. You could do social studies slash geography um, for that if you want to be really thorough so that they don't uh, say, oh, well, where's your geography, science, music. Um, you could do science and health. I usually just include information about what they're learning for health under science, um, music, art, and physical education. Notice that you don't necessarily, for something like physical education or even art and music, you don't necessarily have to have a formal class or a formal curriculum. You could save for art crafts to coordinate with um, other studies. For music, you could include singing at church or attending concerts, that type of thing. Um, physical education can be include a lot of things that they're already doing every day, playing outside and um, if they go to day camp, summer camp, anything like that where they're doing outdoor activities, you can include that in physical activity and physical education. So as you can see, my, my goal is to have my eye hips be a page. So another example of let me show you an example of a seventh or eighth grader. So, now this is going to be a little interesting because I, I start some high school coursework in junior high, which there's no reason why you can't do. What I do is just put an asterisk and note at the bottom that their course is for high school credit. Um, so, again, I have a listing of, of areas of study and what curriculum. I'm using for those. So, and notice in practical arts, Jaina has a small baking business, so that, that can be listed, and you just document on your quarterly reports what's, what's being done with that. Doesn't have to be anything complicated. And then for those of you that are doing high school, high school is done a little, is done more for, um, credits so I list it kind of like like college courses or whatever I list courses and how many credits will be granted at the completion of that course so um, and something to consider with high school students uh, as it's practical would be dual enrollment courses so that they can get both high school and college credit um, and of course if your student is starting high school level work in junior high they might be ready to graduate by the time they're 15 or 16 and be able to actually um, start college courses and I'll probably talk about that in a later video. So I hope you found some of these examples of individualized home instruction plans to be helpful. Please feel free to borrow, plagiarize, whatever you like from them to use for your own kids and uh, we'll talk some more about how you can then use these to more easily do your quarterly reporting. So this is Rebecca with Homeschooling with a Full Plate. If you found this helpful, please uh, like my channel so that you can see my future videos. Thanks.